This is a fairly good sized blue agate rectangle that we're gonna use for a pendant. These are the little baby seed beads that we're gonna thread into the wire. What? What? Oh yes, oh yes we are. Let's begin. 20 gauge, these seed beads actually catch on to the 20 gauge. Most seed beads, you're gonna have to use thinner wire, but these work, they're actually large for, as far as seed beads go. And they're kind of cubes, which is crazy cool. And they're not perfect cubes, they're like cubes with rounded corners, which is even cooler. See that? It's a little speck on my hand, get off. All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna take um, some wire. I don't know, don't ask me how much. Wait, let's get a ruler. Um, the ruler has paint on it, I can't read it anymore. Let's just say this is about two feet, two thirds of a meter. I'm gonna thread the stone to the middle. Once we get it to the middle, we're gonna bend these. I'm gonna make a loop right here. I have to be careful because I don't want this wire to grab one of these seed beads and throw it across the room. It's happened. It's just the wire bounces around and it just smacks the bead. It goes flying. It ends up in somebody's cereal. It's terrible. It's a tragedy. Then you have to run over and be like, dump that cereal, don't eat another bite. And they're like, what? That's my favorite. That was my the last bowl I had in the box. And the, I don't want to go to the store and get more milk because we're out of milk. And they're like, you're like, just don't eat the cereal. I don't I haven't done the research on how edible seed beads are. And they're like, what? S seed what? It's like a big problem. That's why you shouldn't do your wire wrapping in the kitchen. Okay. Anyway, so we uh, made a loop. We twisted it around once to lock it in. And now we, we folded this side down, folded this side up, and we're going to cross these and make a spiral. I just started calling it a spiral. I was calling it a swirl forever. Like what's, what's the theoretical scientific name that's most accurate. Please tell me in the comments, so whatever it is, I can use the other, because who wants to be right all the time? That's so boring, gosh. So now we have a spiral, or a swirl, whatever you prefer, and you can make it tighter or looser depending on how tight you wrap these around each other. And you can go around as many times as you want. It'll get bigger and bigger, obviously, according to the nature of physics and common sense. But, um, this is a fairly large one compared to what I normally do, and I'm happy with this. And now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bend both of these across here. But wait, it's time for the seed beads. Look at them go, so cute. I feel like I wanna put even tinier seed beads in between them, like spacer seed beads. All right, I don't know how many to use, but that five seemed like a good number. Cool, right? And fold these over. Hold everything tight. On this side, we're going to fold these over each other and twist a couple times. That locks this in place better so it's less able to be snagged later. And then we're gonna come back out this side. And whoop, look, they're dancing all over the place. They don't wanna stay in, in their place. Get over there. And now we're going to fold these up to the top. And get those guys to stay, stay. But wait, let's add more seed beads while we're doing this next part. This is good, except they're all gonna fall to there. So they'll all be on one side, mostly. Like that. And that's cool. But I kinda like them to be a little more centered or, or evenly spaced out. So maybe if I can get these strands doing something before the beads get on. Aha. Design your, the shapes of your wire around what is going to lock in and force the beads to be in specific places. <laughs> it's all so easy. 
It was right in front of our eyes the whole time, and we did not realize it. Better. Okay, stay there, beads, while I figure out what to do next. One more little loop right here, teeny tiny loop, teeny itty bitty tiny loop. Lock those beads and you cannot move now beads, you're stuck. Now we'll wrap it around the top loop and we give it a scarf. Like so. Take one strand, undo it, come down here, grab this, because this is still a little bit slippery and a little bit snaggable. Come down here and we thread this guy through here. Carefully. Don't want to upset anything else, don't want to move anything else around too much. Just carefully pull it through. See, it's moving everything. you got to hold everything in place. You want it to come straight down and straight back up again. Got to feed it through carefully till it gets nice and tight. See how that part isn't really taut yet? We haven't taught it to be taut. We have to tighten it. All right, that's close enough. Um, that's enough so you can't really pull that and snag it. And now we'll bring it right back up here and continue to scarf it as if nothing happened. Bring these two strands back together. Continue the scarf. And the scarf is finished. Cut the two ends. Tuck them into the little bowl made by the scarf. Oop, a little bit too long still. I'm gonna cut it just to have enough, just enough to tuck them right in like that. Push them down into the bowl and we're good. Now let's come back and look at these guys. I like it. These guys are gonna keep rolling back and forth, but then again, uh, this one is kind of stuck when it hits those, so this these five can't go much further than there. They get stuck, which is perfect. Now, what do we do about these guys? These guys, we should have made another little loop right here because these guys can get all the way up in there. So I'll just say to the person wearing it, you know, make sure after you put it on, you push all the beads back in place. That's no fun. They shouldn't have to mess with their piece after they're wearing it. Uh, let's see if we can push these a little bit. What if we gave them a little bit of a bend? Would that mess up the pretty design? I think so. We could crimp each of these two wires right there, but I feel like it's gonna change the design in a way I don't want to. I really like this design and I wanna keep it. So I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna let them be. I mean, they move up and back, but really not much. Um, I could put the tiniest drop of super glue right there and that would solve the problem right there and right there and even right there. Um, I don't like to do that, but I think I will just this one time and give you guys options. There's nothing wrong with adding a little drop of super glue. It doesn't hurt anything. Um, you can hide it. You know what? Let's be bold. Let's find out what happens if we do. If we did uh, bend these a little bit and just hold the beads in place with the crimp. Oh, that's not terrible at all. I actually like that. And we'll push these. Oh yeah, that totally works. Um, we'll bend them back about right here. So they have kind of like a wavy feel. And it looks, it even adds to like, it almost looks like a seashell, like a Nautilus type look. And putting these little waves in here hasn't hurt anything at all. I like that. And now the beads are staying put. And we didn't add any glue. We stayed true to the the wire wrapping way. I don't know if that's a thing, but it's good if you can do, get all your stuff done with just 
wire with just wire without having to add any adhesive. It's kind of a, a thing people aim for, or I aim for at least. Now we can adjust where tighten all these up, adjust everything a little bit more the way we want it. Um, we want these to stay right there where we don't want them to fall down at all, so let's tighten up that swirl. That one to stay up there. There we go. And I want these to lay flat like that. Very fun. That's very fun and whimsical. I want these to come up a little higher. So we'll crimp this right here and here. Um, we'll crimp this one like crazy because we couldn't get it super tight just by pulling. So we'll get it tighter by crimping. And that even makes the back almost tolerable if the pendant ha happened to flip around while someone was wearing it. Fine. I think we're done. Let's add three jump rings. You could turn this a quarter turn, put your quarter chain, or you can just add some jump rings, which I prefer to do because it adds like another dimension and it kind of mirrors the scarfing. All right. And another thing. These are still moving up and down a little bit here and there, all four strands. And that's kind of cool. It's kind of cool that they have a little motion. They can have a little party. They can kind of meander a little bit. They're not held in place because they all tend to fall back into place as you move the pendant. So just kind of let it be.